Now, the economic downturn isn't just having a negative impact on our finances. It seems it's also affecting our marriages. Divorce inquiries are up by a third compared to this time last year as couples forced apart by money pressures seek a final split. The increase in marital breakdowns coincides with an election campaign that is putting family values at the heart of party politics. Emma Birchley reports. I want the next government to be the most family-friendly government we've ever had in this country. I passionately believe that happy families are ones that, that stay together. Call them family values. Call if there's one theme that unites all the political parties, it's the importance of family. But the recession is taking its toll and many families are falling apart. After 10 years of marriage, Tash Yashin is in the middle of a drawn-out divorce. It's left him emotionally and physically drained and deeply concerned about his finances. You're in a position now where you have to go out and purchase another property which you can't afford to do and any remainder equity you do have left in the property, uh, again the lawyers take that so you're back to, um, if you're trying to struggle out of this position you're going back, you're being dragged back into the minus again. Inquiries at law firms have recently hit a 10 year high. What we're finding is lots and lots of almost stored up separations are now finding their way through the legal system. And um, in the first two weeks of this month, for example, um, we've seen divorce inquiries are over a third higher than this time last year. More couples are also seeking counselling from Relate, with redundancy having a significant impact on relationships. The couple have to accommodate the fact that they're not going to have so much money to fling around. Um, they, the one who's lost the job may have a sense of uh, lack of self-esteem. He's lost or she's lost her status. They will be home more often. Some marriages are beyond help, and it's not only lawyers making money from the breakup. Debenhams has just launched a divorce gift list that's already proving popular with those about to embark on setting up home again. And Faye Miller is supplementing her wedding cake trade with a line in divorce cakes. It's not so much about celebrating divorce for a lot of people, it's about marking the end of a turbulent period in their lives or moving on, closure if you like. A lot of people have been for a lot of stress and it's just a bit of light of relief. The party which wins the election will have to accept that family breakdown costs the UK 20 to 24 billion pounds a year in housing costs and benefits and based on current trends it appears more people will soon be needing support. Emma Birchley, Sky News, Central London. Joining us to discuss some of the points raised there, the author Kate Figes, who's uh, just written a new book called Couples, The Truth, looking at the role of family life in modern Britain. Also joining us from Central London is Justine Roberts, co-founder of the influential parenting website mumsnet.com. Morning to both of you. Uh, Kate, you're sitting next to me. Let's start with you. To what extent can and should politicians govern life within the family? Well, when it's two people who want to go into a relationship together, whether they're married or cohabiting seems to me to be irrelevant. But whether, when there are children involved, it is important that government supports parents. But I think it has to be in terms of what parents need, particularly at that time. Bringing up children, particularly when both of you are working and trying to earn a living, is incredibly difficult. It places huge strains on couples. And I don't think that's talked about enough. And I think the reality is that we have to look at what people, families need, rather than being preached at. I think that's the problem. The trouble with this term, broken society, is that it implies we're all somehow failing. When most of the people I met for my book are trying very, very hard against adverse circumstances. They want to stay together. They want to be committed to each other. They don't want to separate. Divorce is the last straw, and it's often a very painful and expensive one. Justine, are you encouraged or alarmed that... Uh, the family is going to be an election battleground. I, I think generally, you know, we're pleased that um, some of these issues that um, get discussed on Mumsnet day in, day out are beginning um, to be discussed in a political arena. The problem is uh, there is a suspicion that what's being said is quite a lot of aligning yourself to a popular position, we support families, and not so much in the way of actual tangible policies, i.e., you know, better and more affordable childcare, more health visitors, things that actually cost money. Unfortunately, I, I wonder if it, it, in this situation we're in where there isn't a lot of money in the pot, whether it's a nice easy win to sort of say, well, we're, you know, we're right behind you families, but, uh, it, but it doesn't actually result in any meaningful support.
Kate, that's, mm. that's a hugely important point, of course. of course. In the middle of a recession, with both main political parties, all three, in fact, talking about cuts, mm. how can there be extra money in the pot to help families? Yeah, and where are the policies to help? Where's, where's the equality legislation that helps mothers work and earn a living? Where is, where's the childcare? You know, where is all of that support? So I think that there is a, a tremendous... I think what we have to recognise is that relationships today are under particular social pressures. And rather than blaming the family for failing, we need to support the family as the most important fundamental building block of a good and healthy society, healthy relationships. And in what way is that needs. not being done? Well, I think that there is a, a marked lack of interest in what goes on in people's private lives and supporting people through the difficulties of relationship, you know, ups and downs, until you get, um, you know, catastrophes, until you get really bad, you know, cases of child abuse when, when the state kind of comes in or blames, blames social workers for not coming in at the right time. Justine, people contacting your website, I mean, do they agree when David Cameron talks about Britain being a broken society? Um, I, no, I, I, think, I think in some respects that's, a, you know, that's a bit of a sort of politician's phrase, really. Um, I mean, you look on Mumsnet and there are uh, tremendous acts of community and support going on every day. Um, you know, I think it is important to recognise that working women particularly are really struggling to, you know, cope with um, still being in charge of most of domestic life and holding down a job, which they often have to because they've got to pay the mortgage and you need two salaries, not one. Um, and I think this, we still have, as Kate says, very much a sort of work-centric culture, very long hours culture, very at-your-desk culture. Um, and, you know, I think the real support that all political parties could give is to make family the centre of the culture by trying to change that work culture, you know, really bringing in proper flexible work legislation, proper flexible paternity, maternity leave, and making firms and individuals, and in particular men, I think, recognise that family is, it's all right to be a family man. It's all right to say, you know what, I'm going to leave at four and watch the school play and I'll be back on at six or something. I, I, I think it's that kind of real commitment to real flexibility that will help struggling families. I'm sure most people watching this would totally agree with you, but, but the economic reality is that's not going to happen. Well, I don't think necessarily it's uneconomic. I mean, if you put all this pressure on families, and particularly working mothers, so much so that, as we see on Mumsnet, lots of them really can't cope and say, well, I'm just going to have to give up my job. You're wasting all their skills, all their training, all the impact they can have on the economy in a proper way. So actually, working flexibly can be working better. It can mean more, more efficiency, more productivity, and not losing all these great and skilled people from the workplace. And, and I would add to that, I think that there is, the, the trouble with all this debate is it leads to this terrible cynicism about relationships. Somehow we're all failing. There's no point in making commitments. Divorce is inevitable. You know, and that's actually not the case. You know, when you look at the divorce statistics, they've been very stable for years. Um, you know, most divorces take place in the first seven years. You know, and if you're not going to, you know, how do you understand how to be married or to be committed to somebody until you try it out and people are allowed to make mistakes and go on and have a better life second time? Run. Once people have children, people, fewer people divorce, funnily enough. It, it puts relationships under great strain. But actually, most people want to try and find a way of working to stay together. And I think that this cynicism about relationships is very damaging. The cynicism about family life. Family life, most family life, is, is quite healthy. We have a good time. We try and make the best of it. We enjoy our children. You know, there are strains to do with modern life. But, you know, I think we need to be slightly less gloomy about it, no, to be well, honest. Well, after all that terrible evidence of, of, of some elements of family life in Britain yesterday in that court case, it's nice to end on a positive note. Kate and Justine, thank you both for your time. Thank you.